Hi everyone, I'm here today with Zach Evanish. He's our Director of Retail Sales at Roofstock. And we're here to talk to you about the ever-changing landscape of real estate investing. Why do you think real estate investing is gaining momentum with so many folks across the country and becoming so popular? Yeah, I think it really comes down to technology. You know, 20, 30 years ago, even if I wanted to buy properties outside of my local market, you know, how would I go about doing it? I'd have to find a, an agent in that market. Then I'd have to find a local property manager. Then I'd have to find someone to help rehab the home for me. And if I was doing that while I had a, a full-time job, it'd be way too much time to be able to do that. So now with technology, um, it allows me to invest in, in markets way outside my, my region um, and get better returns in lower cost properties. Um, so I really think it comes down to it really the technology that allows people to invest with confidence outside their local market. But why would they feel comfortable investing in properties that aren't in their own backyards when real estate is a business that traditionally is about managing properties that are in your own backyard? Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Traditionally, people would only buy in their local markets. I think what really excites me about the change in the, in the landscape of our industry is people are now buying hundreds or thousands of miles away we're really opening up the percentage of people that can buy homes. For instance, people who live in Seattle or, or Portland or, or San Francisco, you know, median home prices are almost a million dollars in some of these markets, mm -hmm. really limiting the number of people that can buy properties, where now if you look outside your local market, you can buy properties. You know, we sell properties for $80,000. You know, our average purchase price is a little over 120000 wow. And people can gain access to those properties for as little as you know, $25,000 down. So really opening up uh, the pool of potential property owners, um, which really excites me. You know, these are new people that are getting access to rental properties, getting cash flow, and starting to build their real estate portfolios. And a lot of people are starting young. So they're buying, you know, a couple properties a year. And before you know it, they own 10 or 20 properties and are still starting to build, you know, real passive income. Um, the other reason is diversification. If you think about you know, where you live, right? You have your job. Uh, some people have their primary residence. Mm -hmm. So to buy an investment property there, you're really putting all of your eggs in one basket. For San Francisco example, you know, it's all very strongly correlated to technology. Right. So if tech has a downturn, it would probably affect my job uh, as your well mortgage. as my primary residence. But if I'm able to invest in, you know, Midwest markets like a Cleveland or a Milwaukee mm -hmm. or a St. Louis, there's a, less of a correlation to technology and now I'm more diversified. You know, you never would say, oh, I'm only going to buy Apple stock, you know, because I live near Apple headquarters. Mm -hmm. It just really doesn't make sense. Now we're really opening up the world to investment properties and you can pick markets, you know, across the country. And a lot of these markets offer uh, different opportunities than your local market would offer. Let's say I, Stacy, own a property in Cleveland, Ohio, but I live in the Bay Area, which I actually do live in the Bay Area. What do I do uh, if my renters move out of that house? How do I manage that property? Uh, how do I trust somebody to manage that property well? Yeah, I think that's the biggest concern, right, is what happens if my tenant moves out? What happens if there's repairs that are needed late at night? And it really comes down to your local property manager. You know, these are experts um, of managing properties. This is what they do day in and day out. And I think one thing that surprises people is it's really not that expensive. You know, they're gonna charge anywhere from six to 10% of the monthly rent. Okay. Uh, Roofstocks usually is able to negotiate those down um, mm. to below market rates. Excellent. Um, and these property managers, they only make money when you do. So they're gonna collect six to 10% of the monthly rent. So if the home's occupied, they're gonna make money. Um, if the home's vacant, they're not going to. So let's walk through that scenario. Yes. Uh, your tenant moves out. Mm -hmm. Your lease you know, expires at the end of June. So but, uh, three or four weeks before the tenant is about to move out, they're gonna reach out to that tenant and find out if that tenant wants to continue to lease. If so, um, they're gonna reach out and get the tenant to sign a new lease, generally another 12 months. If that tenant, for whatever reason, wants to move out, then they are going to start to market the property. It's all about doing this early and being very proactive. So they're going to start putting it on, on Zillow, uh, a bunch of different rental areas to try to attract tenants. And that's yeah. before, before the tenants, the tenants move moved out. out. It's okay. all about being proactive and doing things on the front end. So they're going to start to market your home. The tenant moves out. 
they're then going to reach out to you and say, okay, here's some of the repairs that we need to make. We need to paint the walls and redo the carpet. Then they're going to give you an estimate for those repairs, generally you know, somewhere between say $500 and $2,000 to get those repairs done. They're then going to start marketing the home, just like any real estate agent would. They're incentivized to get that home leased, sure. so they're going to try to get you a new tenant as soon as they can. They're handling all that. They're going to reach out to you when they have applicants okay. and then get that home leased and then you, know, you now have another tenant in place. So, you know, tenants are gonna come and go. That's part of owning rental properties. But by having experts on the ground, you can really minimize that vacancy time. What if I'm ready to buy a property? Um, just kind of walk me through how I get started. Yeah, I mean, I know there's, there's a ton of information out there. There's a ton of opinion out there. If you like real estate investing, there's, you know, experts wherever you look. So I think it's really important to uh, take a step back and really think about, okay, what are my goals? Number one, you know, what is my budget? How much do I comfortably have to invest? Not only for a down payment, but also things like closing costs and making sure you're having reserves for repair and maintenance, that thing. So what's my budget? And then number two, uh, you know, what are my goals? What are my short-term and long-term goals? And then from there, just think about, you know, what brought you to real estate investing? For a lot of people, that's you know cash flow and the fact that you can really build long-term wealth. You know, I, I was speaking with a woman last week, and she was really focused on you know I really want to do this, but how do I know I'm buying the perfect property? Yeah. So we took a step back, talked to her about her about her budget and her goals, and said you know there's really no perfect property. Mm -hmm. Every property is going to have its pluses and minuses, but let's find a property that reaches your goals. Uh, you've looked at the inspection report, you've looked at the neighborhood, you're really comfortable with all those things, and then it checks those boxes, it's probably a great property you know, to move forward with versus saying, yeah, this one's good, but maybe there's a better one or really feeling like you have to find the perfect property. And sometimes waiting for pro the perfect property can be several years. And during those several years, you know, the market's moved and that's a couple years where you've missed out on all the wonderful benefits of owning rental properties. So tell me, how do I get started? What do I do? Yeah, the first step is to go to Roofstock. Uh, it's free to create a profile. And really from there, you know, we help you work at your own pace. If you're ready to get started now, you can start browsing properties. You find a property you like, you can actually make an offer right through our site. Oh. You know, for if you're still a few months away, you can look at some of our learning tools, you know, about property management, certification process, financing. Uh, we do also have a team of advisors. Okay. You can schedule a call with, with one of our advisors if you'd like a demonstration of the site or some more help in finding a property. Oh, that's so we're great. really here to you know, help you work and, and move at your own pace. Well, thank you so much for being here and talking to us about real estate investing and how it's changing. Of course. Uh, if you would like to find out more, please visit us at roofstock.com.